my soccer universe. Well, I just watching some YouTube videos and thought, well, I could do a video about the greatest guitar solos of all time. But no, we're talking about soccer, of course. Uh, <laughs> gonna stay on topic. Uh, we're in Liverpool for this uh, weekend review, as we will see. I think Liverpool got some love from me last weekend also. Not sure about that, but they definitely deserve some love. I think they have the most impressive start of any team in Europe. And maybe, maybe, I said it already, it is their year. Uh, but before we start that, yes, there was the Ballon d'Or. And who won it? Megan Rapino for the US, US women. That was not a big surprise, I think, after her uh, World Cup. The men's side was, uh, and actually... I'm wearing Liverpool, but it was not the Liverpool player that won. Virgil van Dijk came in only second behind Lionel Messi, who is now record sixth uh, Ballon d'Or. Um, you know, don't want to say much. I know that the voting is always a little bit weird in that one. I think the FIFA voting is that every national team captain, and every national team coach has one vote, which typically for, especially since there are many lesser nations that probably don't even see as much. I mean... Uh, go into the Oceania and so on, um, you don't know what they will vote for and then they go for the big name. This time it's Messi. Does Messi deserve it? Yes, he does. I mean, um, very, 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 very quickly, I think Messi still had an outstanding season. There is no doubt about that. It's just that by his standards, his, his season was probably more mediocre. And um, Virgil van Dijk, best defender in the world at the moment. So a defender will always have a hard time against the striker. But let's look quickly at so many results in the league. So this time I will try to go a little bit quicker through uh, where we are in the leagues, um, what the standings are and, and, and so on. So please bear with me. We have... I think about 10 leagues to go through. I mean, I go through a top five in a little bit more, more detail, but there were so many other big games that hinted already in the what to watch for. And I want to go through all those and at least highlight those games and where uh, the teams are. It's either top of the table clashes or uh, derbies. And there was one that was basically the big, uh, or two that were the big classic matchups in these leagues. So, I mean, uh, lots to talk about. And we're gonna start in La Liga, uh, that probably had the most interesting results. I mean, Osasuna Betis uh, to start the weekend off nil nil, uh, Villarreal 2 nil via, via the Little Levante nil nil, uh, Eibar, Atletico Madrid nil nil against Celta. That was the first one we talked about yesterday, where um, I think Atletico is kind of shooting themselves a little bit in the foot. Uh, you think this is the young, new, exciting Atletico that everything seems to be wide open for them. It might be that they're dropping the ball. The big result is Granada-Barcelona. Um, second defeat in five games for Barcelona. This is next to unheard of and really puts Barcelona seemingly in trouble. But when we look at the stand, we will see it's actually not as bad as one might fear. Then on Sunday, a little bit more goals. 4-2 Getafe and Mallorca. Espanyol uh, loses at home to the Real Sociedad. 1-3. Espanyol having also a rough start. Valencia only manages 1-1 against Leganes. Bilbao storms to top of the table with a 2-0 all over Alaves. And then the top of the table clash that was kind of down because Real Madrid put in the fight. 1-1-0 against Sevilla. And so in the table we have now Bilbao and Real Madrid on top. Uh, both with 11 points, Bilbao just because of goal difference ahead. Granada, Real Sociedad, Sevilla and Atletico Madrid then with 10. Villarreal 8 and then we see Barcelona in 8th spot. Uh, not where they would expect themselves to be, to be honest. Uh, it's seven points, Levante has also seven points, also sooner is also seven points. Then Getafe, Valencia six, Alaves five, Real Betis five, Real Valladolid Elite five, and Celta five. And then on towards the bottom, we have two teams with four points, that's Mallorca and Espanyol. And Eibar and Leganes are already a little bit in trouble. But I think most trouble we definitely can say is, at least from a name point of view, is Barcelona. Okay, on to the Premier League, um, where we had the Friday evening game uh, with Southampton losing at home to Bournemouth 3-1, a derby. Uh, Leicester wins 2-1 against Tottenham, we talked about it. Burnley 
against Norwich. Norwich kind of uh, back up the loss, their win over Manchester City. Everton at home uh, lost 2-0 to Sheffield United, which was a very effective performance because I think Sheffield shot twice on goal, but Everton just couldn't get anything going. Then the big whooping between City and Watford, 8-0. So you see Norwich and Manchester City. Uh, Norwich beat Manchester City and now it went the completely opposite way for both teams. Newcastle match is only 0-0 at home to Brighton. Uh, then we have Crystal Palace, Wolves 1-1. One, one, and Wolves also mm, getting only slowly going. Uh, I actually saw a little bit of what I didn't mention it yesterday. West Ham, Manchester United 2 Nil and absolute abysmal performance by Manchester United. And that's another team that is in a whole other heap of trouble, I gotta say. Uh, there was a really flat, flat performance, and uh, United, uh, yeah, West Ham United didn't have much uh, trouble dispatching them. Arsenal against Aston Villa 3 2, they were twice behind. Arsenal can get back into it, so that was, um, you know, after. They had such a bad performance against Watford, at least in this time around, Arsenal uh, mans up. And then Chelsea, Liverpool, talked about that. Liverpool had a 2 lead, but Chelsea should have gotten more of that game. 1-2. And so, table, perfect start for Liverpool. 18 points out of 6 games. I mean, cannot ask for more. City, 5 points behind um, with 13. Then we have the 11-point faction which is Leicester, Arsenal and West Ham. Arsenal being a very up and down team also a little bit. Uh, Bournemouth with 10, then we have Tottenham, United and Burnley and Sheffield United with 8 points. Also Chelsea has 8 points and Crystal Palace have 8 points. So a very big midfield. Um, Southampton, Everton kind of uh, with 7. Now we get really in the lower rungs. Uh, Brighton and Norwich with 6. Newcastle 5. That's already iffy. Uh, Aston Villa hanging on. Wolves and Watford clearly now going towards the bottom, which is so surprising given how good they were last season. Then Serie A. There was quite some interesting stuff. First of all, Cagliari winning against Genoa 3-1. Udine loses at home to Brescia. Uh, I always thought Ud Udine had a good start. Nope, not that much. Uh, Juve having some hard time against Hellas uh, with a 2-1 win. Of, although, you know, they played an all-time squad. Milan losing at home to Inter and the Derby. Talked about that at length. Sassolo, Spal 3-0. Roma gets the last <laughs> gasp win against Bologna 2-1. Uh, kind of asserting their start. Napoli gets a relatively easy win against Lecce, uh, I think with uh, Llorente playing from, from the beginning, so there was also some rotation happening. Sampdoria finally gets a win 1-0 over Torino. Fiorentina does not get the first win, only 2-2 against Atalanta, because Atalanta equalized in the last minute, and then Lazio gets a 2-0 over Parma. So now in the standings, Inter still a perfect start. 12 points, uh, not as perfect as Liverpool though. Juve with 10, Napoli 9, Roma 8. Uh, then we have kind of this Lazio, Atalanta, Bologna 7. I'm really curious of how Bologna will hang on, if they can hang on in there. Then Sassiolo, Cagliari, Torino, Brescia and Milan. Uh, Milan minimalists, I mean it's the first time that they had a 2 in their score and that basically drops them all the way down uh, to 12 spots. Then. Um, Go, going towards the bottom, Hellas and Genoa with four, Parma, Udine, Spal, Lecce, Sampdoria with three, and Fiorentina with two. And I have to say for Fiorentina, uh, they had a really tough op opening program because they actually play well, that they have only two points on our last and table is a little bit of a misnomer, I gotta say. Germany also had some interesting uh, results. First of all, on Friday, Schalke uh, beat Mainz 2-1, Freiburg, Augsburg 1-1, uh, Leverkusen, Union Berlin 2-0, Bayern, Köln 4-0, and uh, Hertha PSC gets their first win 2-1 against Paderborn. Um, then uh, Leipzig dominates uh, Bremen 3-0, Gladbach turns around there uh, Europa League loss for nil at home to Wolfsburg. <laughs> 2-1 against Düsseldorf and then Frankfurt manages 2-2 against Dortmund. Uh, didn't see anything of that game, but um, I, I know that Andres Hill was scored for Frankfurt. That uh, was a little bit of a surprise, but it also shows that Frankfurt 
could be in there. They are, they are a highly inconsistent team. They play excitingly, but I think um, the front and back, it just doesn't quite fit yet together. And yesterday, Wolfsburg manages a 1-1 against Hoffenheim. Uh, Hoffenheim actually being 1-0 ahead in that one. Uh, so Leipzig leads the table with 13 points, only drop points um, as far as, uh, against Bayern. Bayern twice dropped points already, uh, starting the season with Hertha, and that's why I'm surprised that Hertha is uh, so deep down in, in the table. Dortmund now only uh, 10 points, dropped also points. Freiburg could have been uh, at least not top of the table, but you know could have been uh, a second if they would have won against Augsburg. Schalke. Good start. Uh, Gladbach also good start. Only horrible Europa League and Leverkusen all with 10 points. Wolfsburg 9. Then we have Frankfurt at 7. As I said, kind of inconsistent. Werder with 6. Uh, then we have a few 5-point teams with Hoffenheim and Augsburg. And a few more with 4. Düsseldorf and the two Berlin teams. And then to a support, unfortunately, Köln. I really hate to see them down there. Mainz also 3. And Paderborn only 1. Okay. That's Germany. Let's go to France. Uh, Strasbourg not 2-1. Marseille Montpellier 1-1. Bordeaux Brest 2-2. Brest is having actually quite some interesting results here and there. Amiens wins at Metz 2-1. Uh, nice at home to Dijon. Uh, Nîmes to lose 1-0. Uh, Reims Monaco 0-0. Then Rennes, Lille 1-1, that was a big game, Rennes keeping up there, and Angers is probably the sensation at the beginning of the season, uh, getting another win, 4-1 on the saint -Antienne. Of course, the big clash ends with a 1-0 win for PSG over Lyon, and PSG leads the table, they had only one loss, and that's against Rennes. Um, Angers with 12, Nice with 12, uh, those are pretty darn good starts of those two teams. Uh, Rennes. Also hanging on in there with 11, Marseille with 11, uh, Lille and Nantes 10, uh, Bordeaux 9, Lyon 8, Reims 8, Nîmes 8, Montpellier 8, Toulouse 8. Again, a very big midfield. Amiens 7, Brest also 7, Strasbourg 6, Saint Etienne 5, that's uh, especially Saint, Saint Etienne. Having a rough start, Metz 4, and Monaco also only 3 points, and Dijon Monaco definitely looks to be in danger. So that's basically for now the um, the big leagues. Let's go all around Europe and see some interesting results. I want to start actually in Portugal where I finally saw and I have not heard of this team before. I really need to check them out but they get another win yesterday in the evening. 2-1 over Sporting. That was for me the first real test and they remain top of the table ahead of Benfica, ahead of Porto. Both of these teams had already a loss. Porto had won had uh, the win over Benfica and Benfica lost somewhere else. Porto won 2-0 against Santa Clara, Benfica 2-1 at More, More Renze. So um, that's for me a big talking point. I want to see if they can keep it going and I really need to check out the team. I don't even know from where they are from, honestly. This is the first time this season that I'm aware that these teams exist and they are top of the table. 16 points out of 6 games. That means they only had one draw. Pretty amazing. In the Netherlands, we had, of course, a big clash between PSV and Ajax, uh, which remained top of the table, but Vitesse uh, joins them now. Um, Vitesse Arnhem, thanks to 4 2 over Sittard, M and Feyenoord only 3 3. That seemed to be a, a big game as well. But Feyenoord, as you can see in the table, is kind of hanging in the in midfield. It's Ajax 14, PSV 14, Vitesse 14, Alkmaar is also Inter 20, Willem. So yeah, uh, 20 actually had lost to Heracles. So um, it seems to be same old, same old for now, but uh, let's see how the season develops. Uh, PSV and Ajax seem to be the class in the league, as they have been for quite a while. Let's go to the neighbor, to uh, Belgium, where the big game was uh, Club Brugge against Anderlecht, although uh, Anderlecht is really in not good form. Uh, Club Brugge winning 2-1 and now rem uh, in second spot. Uh, the leader in Belgium is Standard, who had a 3-0 open. Uh, Anderlecht only in 13th spot out of 16, so uh, there's definitely some trouble. I think Vincent Company is the... Uh, is okay at least coaching it doesn't look good at the moment 
definitely has to has, has, has have said that's a big team in trouble. And yes, Anderlecht used to be a really big team in Europe, not at least in the 70s and 80s, for sure. Uh, let's stay up north and we go quickly to Denmark. That's maybe the only downer. The big matchup between Copenhagen and Midtjylland ended nil-nil, which means Midtjylland can stay on top with 26 points, Copenhagen only to uh, 22. Um, other than that, it's AGF and Brøndby that stay up there. Um, so yeah, that was Denmark. I think that was the only big clash where there were no goals in there. In the Czech Republic, we had the Prague derby, uh, but uh, that's also sim similar, not quite, quite as bad as in Belgium, where Slavia beat Sparta relatively easy with 3 0. Uh, as far as I, I, I recall, there was an own goal in there for Sparta from Sparta, uh, and the penalty to make it 55th and then 89th it was made 3-0, there was two red cards, one first for Slavia and then a late one for uh, Sparta, so definitely a uh, lot, lot of action happening there. Slavia leads the table three points ahead of Pilsen. In Austria, we also had a big clash, first against second, or second against first, last Salzburg 2-2. Lask had a 2 0 win and hung on up until the last minute when uh, the equalizer for Salzburg was scored. Salzburg playing with the reserve team. That enabled Wolfsburg with a 2 0 win at Hartberg to leapfrog Lask and get into second position. Salzburg drops points for the first time. Uh, another big talking point was Mattersburg and Sturm Graz, where um, Sturm really felt that the referee did them. Uh, a big disservice. So if you look at the table, it is Salzburg, Wolfsburg, uh, Salzburg ahead of everyone, and then kind of relatively tight together. Wolfsburg, Lask, and the Rapid. The Rapid is a little bit surprising to me. Sturm already and Hartberg a little bit off, and Austria Wien finally got off the Schneid, although they also had a really bad start to the season. Moving further now, let's go south. The Belgrade derby ended with a 2-0 for Partizan over uh, Cervena Svesta. This was a big surprise to me. Also seemed to be kind of a really hot derby. Uh, there, I think there were again rot red cards given. Let's see. Yes, uh, uh, a red card in the 90th for uh, uh, Cervena Svesta and then uh, Tosic in also in the 90th. It was two late goals. Uh, 83rd, Suma in the 90th. Uh, Tosic, that to me is, you know, it's a bucket list derby. I mean, that's probably the hottest derby uh, out there in Europe uh, where you still have this sense of dan danger. And uh, through that, we have now a surprising leader also with Bacca Topola in the table. Vojvodina is third and Cucharicki uh, is third. And then it's the two Belgrade teams. So let's see how this goes in Serbia. A uh, lot of action also in Greece, where I said there were two big derbies. First, Park only manages a 2 2 against Aris Saloniki. Um, I think Park twice equalized something like that. And also a lot of heat in that one. Uh, yes, with two red cards within three, three minutes. And yes, at 99th, uh, twice equalizing in the fourth, uh, Aris took a lead. Sixth, an equalizer in the 88th, Matilda. Thought to have won it for Park, but in 99th, the equalizer. And a late equalizer was also in the second derby in Greece. A derby, you know. Uh, it's not the uh, Piraeus, it's, not, it's the harbor of Athens, but you know. Olympiakos uh, having a holding on the lead, and then the 90th minute Panathinaikos um, equalizes. And so it remains Olympiakos and Park on top of the table with 10 points. And we'll finish this video in Russia where the big uh, matchup was between CSK in Moscow against Krasnodar, CSK having a three-goal lead. Krasnodar coming back in the second half, uh, make it 3-2, but it's not enough. And they are now toppled from the table. Uh, Zenit with a big win over Kazan takes first spot. And CSK Moscow is in second. Lokomotiv Krasnodar with uh, 20 also, and then there's also Rostov in there. So very interesting standings there as well, but probably Zenit is the favorites there. 
As I said, a long walk through Europe. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Drop me a comment, a comment below. I needed to go a little bit faster this, this, this time around. I will give you a what to watch for uh, also because we have midweek uh, games, not Champions League related. I'm not sure if we will get to a uh, Champions League jersey review in today. That might be the next one tomorrow. Drop a comment below what you thought about uh, all the standings in, in the leagues where you think it, it will be going. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye. Thank you.